George. What? If you had three wishes, what would you wish? I'd wish for three more of these. <laughs> very romantic, are you? I mean, no, I mean, don't you ever just, you know, want to get up and go? I would if I drank three more of these, yeah. <laughs> travel. Oh, travel, yeah, yeah. I'd like to travel, yeah. Where do you want to travel to, then? Well, I'll give you a clue. Yeah. What is big and warm and friendly? Hey? <laughs> what is big and warm and friendly? You a missus, you mean? Or <laughs> Australia. Australia. Oh, that's right. That would be nice. That really would be nice. Do you believe wishes come true, then? No. <laughs> nice to try, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> George. Sid, you've still got two wishes left. <laughs> yeah. You'd better wish for two bottles of suntan lotion. Hey? sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Me. <laughs> well, I know that. I'm not daft, am I? Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Here, what's making you limp? I'm not limp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you mean, your feet? Are you lost a shoe? No, no, I found one. <laughs> <laughs> Good job it fits, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's bound to fit, isn't it? I got one foot bigger than the other one. Mind you, everybody's like that. Everybody's got one foot bigger than the other. I haven't. I'm quite the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got one foot smaller than the other one. <laughs> Ain't you got no proper shoes or what? Oh, yeah, I got proper shoes. Yeah, I got my best proper shoes for Sundays and that, you see. Yeah, I bought myself a new tie the other day. Had to take it back. Why? It were too tight. <laughs> <laughs> What is that door doing there, then? Oh, that, I carries that around with me, that door, I do. Oh, really? Why? Yeah, well, I lost the key the other day, you see. Mm -hmm. And in case anyone finds it and gets into my house, I takes the door around with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very clever, that is. Yeah. Right? Here, what happened if you lose the door? Oh, I left the window open. <laughs> Did you hear about poor Reuben? Reuben? No, what? Reuben? What? Oh, he was up in court the other day, you know. Never. He was, so too. He stole a calendar. Well, what did he get? Twelve months. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon myself that Reuben drink too much. Well, he told me he only drinks to calm himself. Oh, well, that'll explain it then, won't it? Last Saturday, he was that calm he couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my birthday today, you know. Oh. Yeah, November the 13th. Really? Yeah. What year? Every year. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two presents. I got I got a wristwatch with an alarm yeah. and a bottle of aftershave. Oh. So if you hear anything and smell anything, it'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least... <laughs> At least you won't be late for your work, will you, eh? No. I'm always late for my work. Why? I sleep slowly, you know. <laughs> I snore as I does. No. Yeah. I snore so loud, I wakes myself up. <laughs> but I solved it. How was that? I sleep in the next room. <laughs> 
<laughs> Talking of snoring, it's my wife's birthday next week, and all we know. Is it? Oh, yeah. She asked me to give her a, a coat made of animal skin. Oh, what are you going to give her? A donkey jacket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got another present here. See oh. this? My Uncle Dallas gave me that. Oh, right. That is an umbrella, look, see? Look at that. Oh, right. <laughs> I see. That's lovely. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, what is that hole there for? Oh, well, that's so you look at it and see if it starts raining, see? That's <laughs> <laughs> good, isn't it? It's good. Yeah. Talk, uh, listen, I look... <laughs> I peeked through the hole in the fence the other day, up the road there at that nudist camp. Oh, you know? yes, yeah. I've heard about that. Yeah. Do they have men and women up there? Well, I don't know. They've got no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no good sitting here. I've got to go now. I've got to go up the doctors, you know. Don't like the look of my wife. Oh, I'll come with you. I hate the sight of mine. <laughs> Good evening. I am the president of the Loyal Society for the Relief of Sufferers from Piss Pronunciation. <laughs> for people who cannot say their worms correctly, <laughs> or who use the wrong worms entirely, so that other people cannot underhand a bird they are spraying. <laughs> it's just that you open your mouth and the worms come turbling out in one side. <laughs> you dick not what you're thugging a bit. <laughs> And it's very distressing. I'm always looing it, and it makes one feel unbumfortable. <laughs> Especially when one's, one's going about one's diddly tasks, slopping in the slooper market for ink stands. <laughs> Only last wonk I approached the chuck-out point, <laughs> and I showed the ghoul behind the crash desk <laughs> the contents of my trilly, and she said, <laughs> she said, all right, Grandad, shout him out. Well, of course, that's fine for the ordinary man in the stoat, who has no dribble with his warts. <laughs> To someone like my slurf, it's worse than the kick in the jackstrap. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you get stuck on one letter, such as wobble you, you see, and I said, uh, well, I've got a tin of whoop, a woocumber, two packets of wheeze, and a wallyflower. <laughs> well, then she tried to make fun of me and said that will be woo pounds, wifty wee pen. <laughs> so I just said wobblers and walked out. <laughs> But you do see how dicky felt it is. <laughs> but help is at hand. The new society has been formed by our mumblers to help each other in times of excremices. <laughs> it is bald piss months is unanimous. <laughs> and anyone can ball them up on the smelly phone at any tide of the day or no. <laughs> 24 flowers of spray, seven stays a creek, and they will come round and get drunk with you. <laughs> For foreigners, there will be impertuitors who will uh, all squeak many sandwiches, such as, uh, such as Swedish, Turkish, Burkish, Jewish, gibberish, and rubbish. <laughs> Membranes will be able to attend tight stool or heaving classes <laughs> to learn how to grope with the many kaplinkities of daily life. Which brings me to the drain reason for squeaking to you tonight. <laughs> the society's first function as a body was a grand garden freight. And we, we hope for many more bodily functions in the future. <laughs> the garden plate was held in the grounds of Sydney University. And the guest of horror was the great American pip singer, Manny Barilow. <laughs> the plate was opened by the external affairs P minister, Mr. Andrew Shadowcock. <laughs> who gave us a few well-frozen worms in praise of the society's jerk and said that in the creaks and stunts that lie ahead, we must all do our nut roast to ensure that it sucks weeds. <laughs> then everyone visited the various stalls and abruisements, the rudabouts, the thing boats and the dodgers, and of course all the old flavourites such as the coca shy nuts, dry your length, guessing the weight of the cook and tinning the pail on the wonky. <laughs> the occasion was great fun, and in short, I think it can safely be said that all the men present and thoroughly good women were had all the time. <laughs> So please join our society. Write to me, Dr. Smallpith, <laughs> the spanner, Poke Moses, and I will send you some brieflets to browse through and a brass badge to wear in your loophole. And a very good night to you all. Good night. <laughs>
what seems to be the trouble. <laughs> I've got a hatchet in my head. Good heavens, so you have. I noticed it as you came through the door, but I thought, I thought it was some sort of hat. It is some sort of hat. Yes, what sort? The painful sort. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it causing you some discomfort? Of then? course it is. Of course it is. Yes, it does look. Does look very sore, I must say. You see, of course, you've got it here, haven't you? Bang here, you have it. Right between the sex drive and the ability to sew on buttons. <laughs> Would you do something about it, please? Yes, certainly. What is your name, please? <laughs> Initials? TK. Look, I fail to see what Date this is. Date of birth, please. <laughs> August the 4th, 1930. Oh, well, that's it. Typical. What do you mean, typical what? Typical Leo. Leo? <laughs> Leo, fire sign, fire, metal, hatchet. It is a fireman's hatchet, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, it's the 11th of the month. You are bound to get a hatchet in your head. I mean, it's curious, this, because you won't believe this, but I've just written a paper on the very subject. <laughs> Perhaps you'd... Perhaps you'd care to read it. No, thanks. <laughs> I don't feel like reading. I've got a splitting headache. <laughs> well, me too, I can assure yeah, you. Yeah, but I've got hatchet in mind. <laughs> to the untutored eye, outwardly, yes. Some of it is inwardly. <laughs> it hurts. Look, I am the doctor, Mr. Spat. Will you please allow me to be the judge of what does and what does not hurt? Now, please. You get tingling at the end of the finger? No, 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 no. All the tingling is confined to my head. That's because I'm... Look, let, let us not jump to conclusions. This hatchet in the head may the, be the symptom of something far worse. Well, far worse? How can it be far worse? Look, this is an emergency. Will you do something about it, please? If only you'd come to me ten years ago. <laughs> I've only just got it. A lifetime of sitting in the wrong posture, possibly, or a diet of red meat. And if you didn't even know your birth sign, did you? Of course you're going to get a hatchet in your head. Will you just pull it out, please? You see, in this case, we have to treat the whole man. What about the hole in the man? <laughs> what kind of doctor are you, anyway? Look, you are living out of accord with nature, you see. Your yin and your yang are out of... You see, you're, feel, you're, feel, you're feeling alienated, violent. It's not me that's violent. It's the man upstairs who's stuck in my head. He's a hard one. Look, even the man upstairs obeys orders from outer forces. Oh, I forget it. I'm just going to an ordinary hospital outpatient. Sorry about it. Ingrateful amateurs. What do you know of the cosmos? Look, you are a windbag, a gas bag and a crank, and I hope you sit on your own acupuncture needles. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the headache's completely gone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Love. <laughs>
Um, a large scotch for him and I'll have a beer if you don't mind. Right you are, sir. <laughs> Lovely evening, isn't it? It is very nice, yeah, very nice indeed. It's a bit milder, isn't it, tonight than uh, other nights? You seem to be a bit quiet in here. Oh, yeah, well, it's always a bit quiet, you know, when the, when the weather's good and... <laughs> 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 What was that? Oh, my goodness. Has he finished it already? <laughs> you better give him another one. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. I don't like busy pubs myself, you know. Jostling with the crowd to get a drink, waiting half an hour to be served and all that. It's much better if you get this nice calm atmosphere, isn't it? Yes, you know, where you can sort of enjoy right. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it again. What's that? Oh, my goodness me. He's certainly throwing them back tonight, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> throwing them back? He's throwing them away. They're he's, going over his shoulder. Oh, no, they're not. I, hang on a minute. It's only a matter Oh dear, wait a minute, I've just over adjusted. Wait a minute, get it back. Just slightly overdid it there. That's it, there we are. <laughs> there we are, it's just his gyros, you know, we're a bit out of kilter. Hang on, what was all that about? What about? What do you mean? All that business with your friend's chest. Oh, he's not my friend. No, he's a robot, he's a droid. It's bionic, you see. Get away. Oh, well, what's he made of? Well, you see, his legs are made of 4 twos. <laughs> his chest is made of a no bird cage. His arms are a Meccano set and his head is out of a Myers shop window. <laughs> That's incredible. I never would have known. No, no. Are you one too? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. No, no, that's his name. Are you one too? <laughs> Oh, he's very helpful around the house, you know. Oh, yes, does the washing up and the ironing and all that. Vacuuming and everything. Doesn't even use a hoover. What does he use, then? Best not say. <laughs> <laughs> the vicar didn't half get a shock when he popped round, I can tell you that. <laughs> What's another drink, that's all. Well, there are better ways of asking. Seems a bit inhuman if you ask me. Well, he's not human, is he? Oh, See? well, uh, how does he go on for, uh, well, you know? He's not interested. No, he looks at women rather like you might look at a washing machine, you know. <laughs> you know, he's not programmed for it. I mean, I say he's not programmed. He's not programmed, I say that. But, of course, he did have a mild flirtation with a petrol pump once, but it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Nothing turns him on at all, then? Oh, yes, little switch here, that was it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, basically, you see, he is mindless. He has no brain. He is a mindless hunk of machinery oh. with no feelings. He cares for no one or nothing. Oh, well, where's he going now? Oh, going back to work. <laughs> work? Well, what does he do? He's a parking inspector. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a real good pal. 
She grew up scattling shirts from Seattle. She used to do it as well. She was a big fan of what do you think of that? Uptight down, down, down. She was a huge, tall, really on the ball. Great big lovely day. Grab with the rodeo, working in the stripper show, no two shows the same. <laughs> County Shore Cattle Fair, she would drop her underwear, everyone enjoyed it, you could tell. She was huge, tall, no complaints, tall, up, that down, down, bell. She would always guarantee temperatures would shoot up high. <laughs> and after proving, plus her team began to move it, boy, how the crowd would swell. She was a great crowd, wonderfully endowed. Up high. I want to buy a red lip, big success. She could be the one for me, seemed a lot of fun for me, but she never lied for me. Took my gold, left me in the cold, didn't even leave my heart. She was a large fun and laid on the line. Loose some weight, you know. I can't go knocking on people's doors saying I haven't eaten for three days looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> Lay spread, eh? Yes, I know, yes. Well, there's a lot to be said for me, laid spread, you know. Yes, it's good for married couples, brings them closer together. <laughs> a lot of advantages come with age. Mm. My old granddad, for instance, now he can whistle while he brushes his teeth. <laughs> exactly. Of course, there are disadvantages, too. I mean, I went to the doctor about my memory. It's really going, I told him. I can't remember anything. Oh, what did he say? Well, he was very reassuring. He just told me to forget about it. <laughs> that's it. That's uh, £6.40, £10, thank you very much. £3.60 change, thank you. There we are. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Old Ali Barber's a bit off course, isn't he? Look. <laughs> Morning, Abdul. All right, are you? Very nice. There we are. That's the change, love. See you again. Ta da. Now, sir, what can I do you for, sir? Uh, I want a uh, mouse. Mouse? Mouse? What do you think? Is this a pet shop? <laughs> Chocolatey mouse. Chocolatey mouse. Chocolatey mouse. Chocolate. Oh, chocolate mouse. You want a chocolate mouse? No, no, chocolate mouse. Yes, chocolate mouse. mouse. No, 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 we say chocolate mouse. No, we haven't got chocolate mice here. You have to go no, sweet shop for them. No, not mice, mouse. Uh, uh, mice, my friend, is the plural of mouse, you see. Chocolatey mouse. Uh, chocolatey mouse, that. Oh, that is chocolate mousse. Chocolate mousse, you mean, is it? Chocolate mousse? Chocolatey mouse. No, 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 that's called, that's called chocolate mousse. Chocolatey mouse. Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, yeah, say, well, you could call it that. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, you can call it what you like, can't you? Really? Yes, one chocolate mouse. One chocolate mouse. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So I'll wrap it up. What next? Uh, purry. Curry. Curry. Purry. 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 Yeah. Tomato purry. Tomato purry. Tomato purry. Tomato purry. Tomato purry. Oh, tomato puree. That's what you mean. Tomato puree. No, tomato purry. Tomato. No, no. I must correct you on this. The the pronunciation. The correct pronunciation is tomato purry. Tomato purry. Now, where's the... Molly? Are we out of tomato purry, love? Tomato <laughs> purry. Are we out of what? Tomato purry. Oh, it's all right. It's right here. It's right here under my nose. There we are. So, one jar of very nice tomato purry. There we are. Are you too drunk? Shut up. Clear up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apologies on behalf of the wife, sir. <laughs> Sodder? Yeah, that's what I say, yeah. <laughs> Sodder. 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 Yeah. Sodder. Oh, yes. Sodder. Bicker bonnet of Sodder. Oh, bicker bonnet. Oh, we're back on the list, are we? The bicker bonnet of Sodder. Very bicker good. Bicker bonnet of Sodder. Bicarbonate of Soda. <laughs> Bicarbonate of soda. Very. They have their uses, don't they, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. There we are. Bicker bonnet of soda. So, yes, anything else? Bicker bonnet, yes. Bicker bonnet, yes. yes. Uh, Jewish? Ooh, ooh, uh, no, she looks a bit Jewish, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> No, Chinaman. <laughs> no, we're not Chinaman. We're both C of E. C of E. Oh, C of E. C of E. C of E. You're not C of E. She's not C of E, are you? You're Muslim, aren't you? No, C of E. C of E. C of E. C of E. Coffee. 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 Coffee.
I mean, C of E. Oh, C of E, yes. Yeah. Well, it's over where it always is, by the juice. Like. Oh. The Jewish, Jewish. Oh, that's the Jewish, is Jewish. it? Oh, that's the Jewish, <laughs> I see. Yes. Well, what flavour Jewish would you like, sir? Um, a prickit. A prickit, oh, yes. A prickit Jewish. What? Cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon, Chinaman. Oh, she's found a Chinaman for you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> a prickit Jewish, yes. Prickit Jewish. What yes. else would you Tong like? Tongue Not at all, sir. My no. pleasure. No, no, no. <laughs> no not a pleasure. Tongue you. Tongue you. Tongue you. Tongue tin of tongue you. Oh, a tin of tongue you. Oh, there we are. Look, there we are. The bront. The bront the tongue you. Is that the one? Yes, there we are. <laughs> the bront tongue you. Mm -hmm. What else, then? Um, a pea. Pum. <laughs> pea. Tin of frozen. P. I'm not talking. P. P. Oh, I know. Oh, yes, I want P. Yes, of course. Yeah. I want. Well, look, you go out here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Please, not that. No. P. 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 Villandum P. Villandum P. Villandum P. Villandum P. Villandum. Oh, Villandum Park. Villandum. But Villandum P. Yes. A nice, a nice slicky of that. So there we are. Villandum P. Now, come on, give me a really hard one. Come on, so now, give me. I want. I want a soup. 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 Ah, now I'm catching on to this. You want soup to wash your hands with, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, we don't sell that, so you have to go down the chemist. He's a very nice bloke. He'll cure anything. My malady? Yes, he'll cure your malady for you, yes. <laughs> My malady. My malady. My malady. My malady. My malady for the two us. For the two us? For, for the two us. <laughs> the two us at the breakfast break with the C of E on the two us. Oh, I've got malady. you. Oh, I've got you. A nice cup of C of E, a yeah. couple of slices of two us with the malady on the top spread on it. <laughs> <laughs> There we are. Normality. That's Normality, the stuff. Yeah. There we are. Anything else, sir? Uh, cack. Thumb. Cack. <laughs> cack. 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 Right. Oh, yes, cack. Very good. There we are. One Sierra Lee's, a very own chocolate cack. That's the one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the lot, sir? Chocolate cack. Yes. Chocolate cack. Chocolate yep. mousse. Yep. Tomato parry, yeah. pickle bundle of soda, Jewish Chinaman, C of E, a pricky juice, yeah. tongue pea, soup, yeah. mum malady, and the cuck. Ah, wonderful. 300 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Four P change. Thank oh, you. No, please, no. <laughs> no, please, no tea change. Oh, no change. All right. <laughs> now, I, now, thank you very much. I now go to Habdi Sherry. Oh, Habdi Sherry. You're going down the booze of a quick one, are you? Yes. No, 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 no not the booze. Habdi Sherry. Habdi Sherry? The Habdi Sherry for the clothing. Oh, haberdashery. Haberdashery. Yes, I've got to get large brass ears for my wife. Brass ears? <laughs> no, not brass ears. No. Brass ears. Oh, oh brass ears. <laughs> <laughs> brass ears. Right. Yes. yes, for my wife. Yes. She needs large brass ears because her tights are enormous. So. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, I'd like, if I may, to tell you a brand new cricketing joke, which has never been heard before. Actually, when I say it's never been heard before, that's not entirely true. Let's be honest. This joke is so old, it was found buried with the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> as was the comedian who just told it. <laughs> it dates back to 256 BC, which, as scholars of ancient Egypt will know, was the year of the famous wildcat strike by the Amalgamated Union of Eunuchs. <laughs> <laughs> and Allied Sopranos. <laughs> in a dispute over severance pay. <laughs> it's, it's, incidentally, incidentally, since the last show, I'd like to thank all those of you who have written in with suggestions about what I can do with my act. <laughs> and the one or two who sent diagrams. <laughs> Offers of work have been flooding in. Last week, I was invited to go on a round-the-world cruise by the chairman of the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> this week, I was asked to do a very important after-dinner speech at a function. It was a very important function. I was being asked to present Brit Eklund with the Queen's Award for Industry. <laughs> for, for all her work on behalf of the Youth Employment Scheme. And, and they rang me up and said, come to this dinner. And I said, do you want me to be funny? They said, no, just be yourself. <laughs> now, it, it was actually rather a swish do being held to commemorate 50 years of the Channel 9 canteen. <laughs> Very, very moving experience. Some of the original sausage rolls were there. <laughs> Brought a lump to many throats. It took me back to my 
own early career in the catering trade, actually, when I was a lift boy and a dumb waiter. <laughs> as, I say, as I say, I keep making these jokes about my stature here. I'm used to it. Spent the first two years of my life on a charm bracelet. <laughs> as I say, it was a very, very formal occasion, this dude, but somebody for a joke had told me it was fancy dress. So there we are all, the managing director, the board of Channel 9, all the bosses, all standing around in their smart suits and dinner jackets. And I'm trying to act casual, you know, dressed as Bo Peep. <laughs> <laughs> With my glass of sherry in one hand and my crook in the other. <laughs> I remember thinking it was actually the first fancy dress party I'd been to since May the 10th, 1975. And I remember it very clearly, the date very clearly, because it was the day there wasn't a sale on at Norman Ross. <laughs> <laughs> on, that, on that occasion, I put on, that occasion, I put on tin legs from a suit of armour and went as a pair of nutcrackers. <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> making out your own jokes. And to be honest, it was the usual low-budget affair, this dinner, to be honest. You know, it was four hours before the Channel 9 cheese board arrived. <laughs> they held a meeting and decided we couldn't have any cheese. <laughs> I spent most of the evening chatting with my agent about his early days in show business when he spent five years touring the country as the back half of Ricky May. 50% <laughs> of the gross, I believe he called it. Anyway, he needed cheering up because his marriage is under a bit of strain at the moment. The other day, his wife was filling in a census form and where it said sex, she put not known at this address. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, ever since the electric blanket fused on their waterbed, she's been off the boil. <laughs> so it's rather sad. However, I've seen you wander from the point again. I was going to tell you this joke about a small country cricket team that is in the doldrums. Now, don't ask me which part of the doldrums. <laughs> I think it was the northern part I, of the doldrums. I, I spent a couple of weeks there myself last summer. Bit of a mistake from the word go. We were staying on a friend's property, and uh, the heating system was a little bit temperamental. And when we got there, it was snowing in the airing cupboard. <laughs> and the rising damp was so bad, the mice were punting around in the mice traps. <laughs> Now, the doctor had told me to take a break. The doctor, because he said I'd been overworking. And I suppose I have, really. You know, I've been taking on rather a lot recently. I've been very active in our local pressure group, Short Comedians Against Bo Derrick. <laughs> Beats personal stereo any day. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I don't. <laughs> I don't put a lot of trust in my doctor's judgment these days. My wife asked if he'd got something for a rather creaky hip joint, and he gave her two tickets to the Don Burroughs room at the Regent. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. No, and back to this joke, which is about the local cricket team. There they are, one Sunday afternoon, going through a bit of a rough patch needing an average of 97.3 runs and over to clinch the game. <laughs> and the top batsman can't see too well, you know. During the interval, he had to have the sight screen moved to eat an orange. <laughs> not, not to put too fine a point of it, the match is a slaughter, so the chairman of the club, he decides he'll put an advert in the local paper. Bats person wanted. Ability to hit a ball, an advantage. <laughs> Apply, blah, 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 etc., etc. Well, a month goes by and there's no response of any kind. And the chairman thinks, I wonder, wonder if I should have put our name and address in, you know. <laughs> Instead of uh, blah, 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 etc. <laughs> and it can make a difference. And just as he's thinking this, there's a knock on his office door and in walks a horse. <laughs> a horse casually pulls up a chair, well, sort of kicks it up, you know. Uh, <laughs> sits down, lights a cigarette, the horse does, and says, I understand, he said, you're looking for some new players, it says. And I wonder if I might put my services at your disposal. The chairman says, but you're a horse. 
The horse said, I know, because he's not stupid, this one. <laughs> He says, but I'm rather nifty with the old willow, and the least you can do is to give me a trial, old bean. So they go down to the nets, and sure enough, the horse plays some strokes, you know, wonderful strokes. Makes Alan Border look like a fly swatter. And <laughs> the chairman is so impressed, he signs him up. And the following weekend, the horse is put in as opening bat. Now, out it strides to the crease. Shin pads, gloves, <laughs> horse box. <laughs> <laughs> In short, it is a sensation. The first over, it smashes every delivery clean out of the stadium, six after six after six, and the club's regular supporters are, are astounded, and they both have to be treated for shock. <laughs> then comes the second over, and the first ball, the other batsman at the other end, he plays a fluke hook shot and starts racing up the pitch to snatch a quick single. And to his astonishment, the horse just doesn't move, just stands there, motionless. And the batsman shouts, what are you doing? Run, for God's sake, run, run. The horse says, run, do me a favour. He said, if I could run, I'd be at bloody Randwick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joan McGuinness. I say, Godfrey, what is it, Humphrey? You've got your shoes on the wrong feet. Oh, impossible, old chap. These are the only feet I've got. <laughs> anyway, my head is in no fit state to think about my feet. Hungover, absolutely draped, old chap. <laughs> well, cheer up, old lad. No one ever died of a hangover. Oh, don't say that, Humphrey. It's only the hope of dying that's keeping me alive. <laughs> With Godfrey. Jeffrey, Humphrey. 
We both left the party together. He was so drunk I couldn't see him. <laughs> I took him to the West End for coffee. You should never give coffee to a drunk. All you get is a wide awake drunk. <laughs> is he better now then? Well, he's getting better. He's in a hospital. In <laughs> hospital? Why? Well, we were sitting on Westminster Bridge playing who could lean over the farthest and he won. <laughs> Treats us right. We'll be back tomorrow night. Oh, down the rubber dub. Daisy, Daisy, standing behind the bar. You are quite easy after my 40th yard. <laughs> it's a bit of an hocus pocus to get you into focus. <laughs> Sweater just goes in and out like a jelly mold built for two. <laughs> Georgie, poor G's nearly as drunk as me. <laughs> He's had 14, I've had 23. Causing spite of his full of figure, my capacity's much bigger. My hollow legs are like two kegs, and I'm filling me wellies too. Get in here, look at all the birds, helps you pass the time. Some are too coarse for words, and some are really sublime. And we tempt them all with liquor of every sort. All I can offer is old and stout. And with me, they get something short. <laughs> if this was the only pub in the world, I still wouldn't eat their pie. <laughs> Nothing could be lousier than the food in here. It's so bad it nearly puts you off your beer. <laughs> if you have the plum and lunch, I swear, it tastes just like mud and straw. <laughs> Picked a pie up and broke me fingernail. The cook here got the sack from Breeze Rail. If this was the only pub in the world, we'd eat at the vets next door. <laughs> Still, the drinking's pretty good. Life is all the folks here. Funny a lot of jokes here. Miles and bit upon the wood. Finest in the old Kent Road. Gore blimey, finest in the old Kent Road. Mine's a pint of brown. <laughs> the finest up in town, spend the rip and what the heck, get the nectar down your neck, keep your pecker up lads, or life will grind you down, let's not ease up, let's have an ease up, mine's a pound of brown, any old time, any old time, I'll drink any old time, now and then same again, you keep paying, I won't say when, half past ten gentlemen, it's way past closing time, oh a little bit of shut on, I'm back for more next time, next time, and yeah. mine's a time, any brown. old time, I'll Mind just have your time, now and then same again, you keep the paying, I won't say when, half past ten gentlemen, it's way Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. Next week, we shall be talking to Australia's oldest working milkman, who's just become a father at 71 and at 23, and at the larches as well. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll also, we'll also be talking to Angus McTavish, 
of the Sydney Caledonian Society, who, when asked to do something Glaswegian on Burns Night, was sick in a phone box. <laughs> Program, we shall be meeting the world's greatest basketball team, which recently changed to a high fibre diet and are now known as the Harlem Bogtrotters. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be meeting Elastic Jack, the contortionist who puts his legs behind his ears and makes a spectacle of himself. <laughs> and it's good night from me. And it's good day from him. Good, good day. day.